My favorite restaurant in the world just announced earnings and they crushed it. Guys, Chipotle, if you want to get me a gift, you get me a McDonald's or Chipotle gift card. I eat there. I, there was a time I was eating there two or three times per day. When I stopped doing that, uh, Chipotle revenue collapsed and the company almost went into bankruptcy. But luckily, I started back again and the company was saved. You're welcome, everybody out there. Okay, so they just announced. This is their press release from Chipotle. Total revenue increased 17% to $2.2 billion. They're expected to do $2.25, so it might be a little low there. Comparable store sales, 10.1%. Guys, this is the big number when it comes to any sort of retail or food establishment. You want to see the stores that have been open 12 or 18 months. How are they doing on sales? It's easy to grow revenue as a company. If you have same store sales declining though, you can still get revenue growth by opening more and more locations. We don't want to see that. We want to see same store sales up and they are up. In-store sales increased 35.9% while digital sales represented 39% of food and beverage revenue. My lordy. Operating margin was 15.3% and increased from 13%. Guys, that's a huge number. That is ginormous. Diluted earnings per share, 925, which is an increase from $6.6 per share. They were expected to do 9.04. So that's probably why they're up a billion percent after hours. Let's check them out. This is our software. If you belong to our um, if you belong to our software and our community, please follow. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. It's up a hundred dollars per share right now. It is up a hundred dollars per share up 7.6% after hours. That's insane. Holy cow. All right, guys, this stock hit $1,958 per share this year and hit a low of 1200. So look, 1958, even after going up to 1400, it's still down almost 25%. So again, we're going to look at the company. We're going to see if we like the financials. If we like the financials, then we're going to use our stock analyzer tool to determine what we're going to pay for the stock based on assumptions about the future. They opened, there was another, another announcement here. Uh, let's see here. We opened 42 net new restaurants during the second quarter with 32 locations, including a Chipotle. Okay. These formats continue to perform well and are helping enhance guest access and convenience as well as increase new restaurant sales margins and returns. That's awesome. So they're focusing on all of this. Now, let's go right to our eight pillar software here. Well, let's actually go to the income statement first. Look at the income statement on Chipotle. The E. coli thing was, what was that, like right around here? Yeah, because look, their revenue fell and now they're storming back. So 2013, they did 2.8 billion. Last year, they did 7 point, the last 12 months, they did 7.8 billion. So they're growing like crazy. How many locations do they have? Does it tell us here? Um, 3,000 stores. The Chipotle Mexican, the Mexican concept is entirely company owned with a footprint of more than 3,000 stores, heavily in the United States. Um, okay, so let's go to the eight pillars tab. All right, guys, look at this. Five-year PE, 101. Five-year price of free cash flow, 84. Oh boy. Now, that's really high. Now, if the company was growing 100% per year, I'd say, okay, that can be justifiable. But I doubt Chipotle is growing 100% per year. Let's look at some of the other things. Not really a high return on invested capital, which I don't really expect for a company like this. But I don't like this. Why are they buying back expensive shares? Usually, we want to see companies stay the same or buy back shares. But I don't want them spending their capital buying back expensive shares. This is expensive. They should only buy shares back that are absolutely necessary because they're too cheap. Because they're so, so cheap, it's the best thing to do with their money. And there's a lot of debt here. But the debt could be because of all their leases. That could be a big part of their debt. So I'm not as worried about that. They need the leases in order to operate their business. All right? Let's look at some other things in the company. Gross profit, 22%. This means for every dollar they increase sales by, 22.2 cents of it goes to the bottom line. All right. Bottom line margin in the last five years was 6.2%. In this last 12 months, 8.7. So usually I'd look at this and be a little concerned, but they're doing a lot of things within the company. We saw from the numbers in the last quarter that they're getting higher margin along the way. So it could be a permanent increase in the margin. All right. Those are key things to look at. Um, what else are we looking at? No dividend, obviously. The last five years, they've averaged 439 million in free cash flow. Last year, they did 806. That's a huge jump. That's a huge jump. Let's go look at that free cash flow line. So we go to the cash flow statement in our software. They're up $112 now, guys. 
Yeah, well, I was right. So here's a cash flow statement. And cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. And we put it here for you right there. Oh, wow, look at these jumps. Yeah, that's great. Big jumps in the last year in free cash flow. The question is, is that permanent? Six or seven years ago, I think they had um, 15 or some stores. Now they have 3,000. That's incredible. All right. So let's go to the stock analyzer tool. Now remember, guys, every investment's the present value of all future cash flow. If you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. I truly believe the more you learn, the less you fear. The more you understand what drives a stock in the long run, the better decisions you'll make and the less you'll fear stock prices falling. That should be your goal. Become immune to stock prices falling because you want to look at stocks the way you look at your favorite outfits, your favorite clothing, your favorite everything. You want to buy more as it goes down in price. Okay, so if you understand that in the long run, stocks are a weighing machine, but in the short run, they're a voting machine, you'll realize that popularity wins in the short run, but financials and fundamentals win in the long run. That's the big key here. So what we're doing here with the Stock Analyzer tool is we don't know the future, so we're making assumptions about the future to determine what to pay for the company today. That doesn't mean if it hits green, we go out and buy, and if it hits red, you avoid are you close? Are you in the green? Go do more research. Are you close in the red, but you're in the red? Go do a little more research. If you're far away in the red, put the stock aside, wait for another day when it's a better value. Either the fundamentals get a lot better or the stock price falls or a combination of both. So let's go run these numbers real quick. First line, revenue growth. Now guys, in the last 10 years, they've done 12%. Last five years, 14.5%. And last year, 23.9% revenue growth. That is increasing. But the bigger and bigger Chipotle gets, the harder and harder it is to get revenue growth. So I'm going to be a little more conservative. I'm going to go 5, 7.5, and 10% revenue growth, which I think 10% is very high, but we'll put it in there anyhow. Profit margin, 6, 7, and 8. Free cash flow margin, 7.5, 8, and 8.5. Actually, you know what? 8.25 and 9. Because maybe they've gotten... Maybe they figured out how to make more money on their, on their stores and they're going to keep doing that and their numbers will keep uh, going up. Now, PE. 14, 16, 18, price of free cash flow. I'm going to do the same thing. And you might be watching going, oh my God, it's a 53. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. PE should be high, high, it should be high for high growth rate or moat, but it should never, ever be 50. I shouldn't say never, but you have to have an astronomical growth rate to get that. This basically means that for every dollar of earnings, you're paying $54 in there for it. You're getting a two per, not even a 2% return on your money. Not worth it. So I put a much lower historical average is 15. So I center around there, but I give a little bit higher because it's Chipotle. It's got a great brand and I love it. Now for desired return, I do 12.5%. Why is that? Well, in an ETF, you can get 9 or 10% by buying the S&P 500 ETF. So if you want a little margin of safety and have a reason to buy an individual stock, put 12 and percent. I'm going to hit the analyze button here. Now we're going to go down. It's going to give us six numbers, three numbers based on earnings, three numbers based on free cash flow. If you're paying attention with our software, if you're part of our, our of our, of our chant of our software here, you pay the less than one cup of coffee per day to have it go in the community when you're done with this and start talking about Chipotle and where it needs to be. But I hit the analyze button. Oh boy. Low price of under 300, high price of 525 to 575, and a mid price of 400. In my opinion, I'm waiting. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.